You may have heard about it when um, Dolores Hope died at age um, 102. She was happily married to, to Bob Hope for um, almost 70 years. But given our findings, I should say, Bob Hope was happily married to Dolores because um, he, died, he died at age 100. Um, and, uh, but it didn't affect the health or shorten the life of Dolores. She went on to live almost another decade. Now this is, this is an anecdote, but it illustrates pretty much what we found in the longevity project. So let me just say a word about marriage. So we know that numerous epidemiological studies have found that married men have a significantly lower mortality risk than single and divorced men. But the evidence is much weaker and sometimes non-existent for women. Now it's usually assumed that this is, is something about the protective effect of marriage, right? So maybe your spouse buffers you against stress. Maybe your spouse helps ensure that you take your pills on time and go to the doctor. Um, there's some evidence along those lines from other studies. But causes have been difficult to identify without a lifelong study. And in fact, the Longevity Project found that this common advice on those lists of 100 things to do, get married to stay healthy and live longer, it's not justified. So we studied the association between marital history and at midlife and mortality. And we, we categorized people in one of the ways we did it was like this. So we looked at 1950, when they were about 40 years old. We classified them, whether they were currently married and, and um, steadily married. They got married and stayed married. They were married, but they were not in their first marriage, so they were inconsistently married. They were still married in 1950. Um, were they currently divorced or separated, or were they never married? And then what happened from 1950 on? Well, here are the results. The men who were married in 1950, but had previously experienced seriously breakups, were um, at significantly higher mortality risk compared to con consistently married men. Now, um, both groups were, that's the first two columns there, they were currently married in 1950, so it can't be just marriage, right, because they were both married, but the ones who had been divorced, um, they, they died sooner. Now, and con we controlled for the number of years they were married, and that, that didn't matter at all. For women, we found something very different. Um, you can see that the women who got rid of their husbands, like uh, Emma Moreno did, they did, they did fine, and the women who never married, um, also okay, and this has been found subsequently in other studies. It turns out, this is not shown here, but women who are widowed, um, all, this also confirmed this. The, they usually stayed healthy and they lived long without their husbands. Now, since divorce is um, one of the greatest social stressors, right, we hear we all this advice to get married, um, even if you're not suited to marriage or not in a good marriage, this is ironically may, may increase your risk rather than decrease your risk, um, right? You can't face the stress and problems of bad marriage and divorce if you don't get married. Statistically, 100% of all divorces begin with marriage. <laughs> now, um, we, we have evidence that conscientious predicts both stable marriage and longevity. So here again is the importance of um, responsible patterns, and we have other evidence along these lines. So if you're uh, a man and you're suited to marriage, and you can stay married and stay happily married, that's healthy. If you're a woman who can find a devoted, supportive husband, that's healthy. Otherwise, forget it.